Hi, I'm Barney from dpreview.com. I'm here with Justin Staley from Fujifilm. So Justin, what's your job title? What's your responsibility at Fujifilm? I am the senior product manager for the X-Series line of cameras. So I'm responsible for everything having to do with X. So, you know, the whole family of cameras, everything from the fixed lens cameras like the X-Q1, the X-30, brand new, the X-100T, now brand new, and then going into the changeable lens cameras, the X-A1, the X-M1, the X-E2, the X-Pro1, and the X-T1. Those are all my... You have, uh, good, you have a good memory. That was a good list. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm counting them on my fingers as, I, as I'm going through them to make sure I didn't, didn't leave one of the children out. <laughs> So uh, let's just talk through the lineup then quickly. I mean, it's um, the X30 is, the, is, is, a fi is a fixed zoom lens compact camera. That's the that's the, the starting point, and then the XT1 at the top end. Yeah, actually, the XQ1 would be the starting point on, on the on the sort of pocketable side. Right. The X30 being a little bit big for my pocket, unless I'm wearing cargo pants or something. Um, but the XQ1 being a very slim, you know, really slim line camera for sort of shirt pocket mm -hmm. uh, use. All the way up to a more sort of DSLR style camera like the X-T1 at the top. Yeah, correct. I mean, who are these? If you were, if you were to, to, to give a quick overview of the, the customer base, I mean, who, who is this camera for, the X-T1? I mean, I think Fujifilm as a brand, we really appeal to people that are passionate and enthusiastic about photography. Um, when I look at where we are as a company and what we're known for and what we do, we're known for image quality. We have film. We have actually this year's 80 years of Fujifilm. So we have this long-standing lineage in silver halide traditional film technology, and we've now transitioned into the digital environment. So it's understanding the process of photography from really an elemental level, if I can go that far, mm -hmm. um, that we understand the way light interacted with film, the way it interacts with digital sensor now. And so it's really providing unique image quality and focusing on image quality. And our other long-standing history is lenses. And people don't quite, I don't think, understand how long we've been building cameras and lenses for. We actually started uh, commercial lens production sort of right in the late 1940s. So we've got a long-standing heritage and history there of building extremely high-performance lenses and sort of combining that and marrying that technology where, it's, to me, is a unique thing for a camera manufacturer to be able to combine that knowledge of capture to, you know, from lens to sensor to print. Mm -hmm. Who is the X series for, if you had to characterize? Um, I think the original plan, when you start going back to the X100, because that's the first of the X series, it really was for that enthusiast. Mm -hmm. That's someone that wanted to carry a camera with them all the time. And wanted a small camera with extremely high quality, an APS-C size sensor, a fixed you know, 23 millimeter, so a 35 millimeter equivalent lens, a range finder styling, so an, a hybrid finder, mm -hmm. sort of that first of its kind combining the benefits of a classic rangefinder type camera with an autofocus camera and a mirrorless camera. So combining that sort of classical technology with cutting edge and what's cut capable and possible inside the digital environment. Mm -hmm. Let's stick with the X100 for, for a minute. It's mm -hmm. a very popular camera with our readers. It's gone through three generations now, the X100, the X100S, and now the X100T. Mm -hmm. The differences between the 100 and 100S were, were pretty profound. Right. Between the S and the T, a little bit less so at first glance. I mean, what, what, how would you describe the differences between the X100S and, and X100T? The, the big difference between those two cameras is the, the hybrid finder. This is now sort of, I will say, the sort of second version 2.2, really, of the hybrid finder. You know, the original X100 was the first version. The X-Pro kind of was an update. Mm -hmm. And this is now the next generation. And one of the big changes that we've done is we've changed over the, to an OLED secondary screen in there. That's allowed us to project more information. We've also, our designers found a little one millimeter gap hidden in the finder mechanism where they've actually inserted now a retractable ND filter which allows us to project a live view image into the optical finder. So it's really giving the photographer more information. The manual focus controls that expands how we can focus the camera. Mm -hmm. It also allows the, the benefits of an EVF previewing exposure, seeing what a film simulation does, to see that in the optical finder, where before those kind of functions were limited sheerly to EVF, it really gives us a nice sort of marriage of that technology. So one of the things uh, with the X100, uh, which I think 
did you a lot of favors, certainly with our readers anyway, you know, made a lot of people very happy as you issued a, a huge firmware update about, I guess, the third of the way through the camera's life cycle, I think, where you fixed a lot of issues, had a lot of functionality, you squashed a lot of bugs yeah. for free. Um, and, you know, that process has continued even after the camera is discontinued. Yes. I mean, is that, um, is that something you intend, is that just a thing that Fujifilm does now? Is that going to continue? Um, I think it's a thing that we will continue to do. Mm -hmm. um, we've really focused on adding features, you know, the, the, the Kaizen philosophy, that continuous improvement philosophy that we have, really just, um, you know, gives customers great faith in the cameras. I think in today's world, a lot of things are disposable. And when you shot film, you had a camera body, you could put the newest film inside your camera body. Mm -hmm. So if you shot a camera, you know, that was built in the 1970s, you could still put, you know, Velvia 50 in it and get the performance of Velvia 50. Digital cameras, you know, it's a little bit different. It's more complicated, it's not quite as simple. Some manufacturers have tried to go down this upgrade route, you know, upgrade the hardware, and it's very difficult to do those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But where we can improve the camera and, and make the advances that we've made in technology backwards compatible, we try to do it. And it really um, has been amazing for brand loyalty. It's made a lot of customers very, very um, proud of the brand mm -hmm. that we're offering these features and these functions. And you know, it, it's, I think, a differentiating factor from Fujifilm to, to most other companies. So how many of your um, interchangeable lens X-series cameras, like the X-T1 and the X-T2, uh, how many of those cameras do you sell to people who started with the X100 or X100S? That's a really good question. To me, the X100S went way beyond our expectations mm -hmm. of it. The X100 series of cameras has spread far beyond because it became that small carry-around camera and the timing of it. Um, but I think to some people it's very limited because having that fixed lens, it really becomes a street photographer's camera. It becomes a documentary photographer's camera, a war photographer, you know, people that like to be in close, like that focal length. Where when you start talking about the changeable lens cameras, now it's a whole different game. We have mm -hmm. 19 new lenses basically in the last uh, basically two years that we've announced for that system. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of, uh, of work to produce those lenses. It's also a big investment to produce those lenses. So I think while there's probably a fair number of customers that have both, I think they have the cameras for a certain reason. Right. You have an X100T because it does certain things. The, the extreme silence of it, the um, leaf shutter in the lens, synchronizing flash at a four thousandth of a second. Those are kind of unique things that not every camera can deliver. Mm -hmm. And so I think oftentimes a customer will have our cameras for a specific purpose, for a specific reason that the tools, you know, designed for. So APS-C sensor format is standard across your line of, of mm -hmm. large sensor X-series cameras, ignoring the XQ1 and mm -hmm. X30. Um, with fixed resolution of 16 megapixels, that's been the case now for a little while. I mean, do you worry that 16 megapixel APS-C you know, isn't big enough, isn't high resolution enough? Do you worry that you're being left behind by other manufacturers? Um, you know, I don't think that we're being left behind. I think where they're designing to, you know, we have a lot of unique things. The X-Trans patterning, you know, giving, giving that each pixel column has red, green, and blue information, um, not just two of those color types. It gives us some advantages in, in, in that. And not having anti-aliasing filters gives us a little bit more of a resolution advantage. Um, but you know, we're always looking to the future. We're always investigating new technologies. We're always looking to see how far we can go. Mm -hmm. Are customers asking for higher pixel counts? Um, cu customers do ask for that on occasion. I would say it's not the most common request that we get. What's the most common customer? request? Um, the most common request that, uh, that we get is uh, people wanting more video functionality of the cameras, really? which, yeah, which we're delivering. In December, there's some firmware upgrades coming for the X-T1 that are going to open up some of those video functions right. and give greater, greater control, greater flexibility, more frames per second rates, manual control of you know, aperture and, and exposure while shooting video. Mm -hmm. Is that a surprise, the number of people who are asking for, for video from these cameras? Um, you know, I think, it's, I think it's just a reflection of the marketplace. The way the marketplace is changing and adapting that people are, are wanting more. They want one camera to do more functions and more features for them. You know, in the past, we had a video camera, you had a still camera, you had all these different things sure. that you carried with you 
on vacation or, or whatever, a, a moment you wanted to capture. Now, if you can do it all in one package, it makes it much, much easier. Are you prepared for that? I know the, the, the X-Trans sensor is, has a lot of strengths as a still camera sensor, but you know, we have seen some more issues with video. Mm -hmm. This is something you're working on, I presume. Um, it's something I know that they're definitely working on. Mm -hmm. The X100T actually is going to come out with a lot of those when it starts shipping beginning of next month. So we should see different video quality from the T oh. compared to the S. <laughs> definitely. I mean, we've got the 24P in it. We've got those other updates that people are looking for and manual controls. So right. I have yet to have a fully working sample of that in my hands to shoot some samples to do it, but I'm eagerly, eagerly waiting for that. Oh, well, we look forward to using it, yeah. I've had a lot of fun using a pre-production one, yeah. so. Um, I mean, the system is now, the X system is relatively new, but it's approaching a degree of maturity. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of lenses, as you, know, as you said, 19 lenses. I think that includes some roadmap lenses. Yeah. Would you say, would you say confidently the, the age of the DSLR is over now? You know, you was thinking about this when we were talking earlier in the segment, and, you know, a friend of mine brought up to me that over time, if we look at back 100 years ago this year, it was sort of the first Leica prototype of 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And if we go back about 50 years is when the SLR started coming in. And so it, this kind of this sequence, this change of technology, I don't think the SLR is going to be dead completely. There is certain applications, you know, sports photographers um, really, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a benefit to that system with some of the autofocus technology. Yeah, specifically phase detection autofocus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think the, the EVF and the integration of that technology is getting better and better all the time. And I think there's lots of um, beneficial factors to the cameras that, uh, you know, the EVF can provide things that an SLR camera can't mm -hmm. provide. Being able to give you an exposure simulation in the finder. Being able to you know, film simulations, things like that, in the finder. Changing displays and information. Being able to actually project different exposure information into your finder path mm -hmm. that you can't do on a traditional you know, SLR camera. You, don't have, you need external space to project that information. So there's lots of advantages to that camera as a system. I think the technology changing and evolving is really where the key is. And it's one of those things that, you know, did this film completely gone away? I don't think so. It's made a change. It's made a transition. It's mm -hmm. kind of become something interesting. I don't think one technology necessarily dead ends and the next one begins. I think it becomes a transition and it becomes right. a staging. And I think customers, people out, guys out there, will be the ones that really will decide what technology stays and goes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, technology changing very rapidly with these cameras, being able to have live view that really isn't laggy, that's giving you sort of a real-time piece that has very, very short you know, mm -hmm. lags in, in where it's showing you, is advantageous. And being able to see in low light. If I take an SLR camera and I go into a dark bar to go shoot, it's limited how much light can come through that sure. mirror box. EVF camera, we can actually amplify the, the light hitting the sensor. You can see. You can see like you're in full mm -hmm. daylight. So you're clear. I mean, we mentioned sports photographers and the, the, the one arguably, you know, you say the one mm -hmm. sort of remaining block, which is yeah. the focusing is still not quite up there with the, some of the professional DSLRs. You're clearly, I mean, you're making lenses like this, and this is a whatever, uh, this is a two, uh, sorry, a, um, 75 to 200 mil, it's a 2.8, it's, it's the classic mm -hmm. enthusiast and, and semi-professional sport carry around lens. I mean, are you dedicated to closing that performance gap? And That's our goal. Yeah. Our goal, goal is to close that performance gap as tight as we can make it. Yeah, how close are you, are you getting to that in, in something like the X, X-T1? I think we're, get, we're getting really close, really close. The speed of autofocus, the speed of tracking. I mean, part of it is this lens using three linear motors. It's having to take the technology and going, okay, we're moving an awful lot of glass there. Mm -hmm. How do we make it work faster? How do we make it better? How can we improve that? And the phase detection autofocus system, being able to have that capability, but expanding it. On sensor. Phase On detection. sensor, yeah. yeah. And then that to me is a huge advantage. So like a 56 millimeter f1.2 lens that we have there, being able to focus that accurately on the sensor, not relying on a remote autofocus sensor to, to, to focus the lens, mm -hmm. being able to say, hey, you know what, this is the spot on the sensor where you're grabbing focus and guaranteeing that you've placed focus there. Great. Well, thank you. That was, a, uh, that was a good overview of the system, I think. Uh, thank you very much for your, for your time. Oh, thank you. And thank you for watching.